So the, this pandemic and the, the havoc that it has wreaked on American lives and on the American economy is unlike anything we've seen, uh, certainly in recent memory. In response to the pandemic, Congress has taken unprecedented action, action that along with Federal Reserve initiatives um, helped to stabilize the economy and um, helped make sure that it didn't hit us too hard too quickly. Beyond the legislative changes that we enacted, existing features of the tax code and uh, traditional safety net programs like unemployment insurance are helping families that lose income and jobs uh, to the pandemic as the pandemic ravages our communities. Known as automatic stabilizers, these policy provisions uh, operate automatically and simultaneously with other actions taken by states and by local governments uh, and by Congress. But it concerns me that many want to extend the economic automatic stabilizers as that would override the deliberation that the American people have come to expect of their representatives, their elected officials who are in place to make law. And that in turn could hinder the economic recovery in addition to weakening our constitutional framework of our limited government system. So mandating more spending in the form of automatic stabilizers, uh, stabilizers that turn on and off based on macroeconomic conditions in real time as they arise, contributes, I fear, to one of the main problems of federal spending. That federal spending is overly automated, causing legislators to uh, a actively manage less and less of the budget, less and less of the federal outlays as time moves on. Reducing legislative discretion, taking the discretionary authority and the decision-making power uh, away from Congress increases costs and it reduces our ability to control the national debt. It also diminishes policymakers' ability to tailor responses uh, to the specific conditions of any future crises that might happen. These things tend inevitably, ultimately, to diminish accountability of government to the American people. The extraordinary measures we enacted initially were warranted, uh, but they're not strategies that we should necessarily continue to pursue now, certainly not without some hesitation, certainly not without asking some questions about their advisability. Uh, these are unsustainable over the uh, indefinite course of the current pandemic. And today, I think we have to pivot to helping communities reopen safely. So our focus moving forward should be on policies that pave the way for an American recovery and to allow businesses to adapt and reopen safely and as safely and as quickly as possible, while at the same time giving their employees and their customers and other members of the public confidence in the procedures that are in place. There are a number of actions that Congress could take to strengthen the U.S. economy while we're going through this and uh, in the process of doing so, hasten our economic recovery. We should examine, and I think we ought to remove the regulations currently in place that are holding back businesses and workers from responding more dynamically to challenging and ever-changing economic circumstances. And we should consider how Congress can encourage Americans to save more so that they can be better prepared for future crises. Just as this is not the first crisis our country has faced, it's also not going to be the last. And uh, the, the healthier we are economically and in every other way, the better prepared we can be to handle the next crisis as it arises. Our efforts should include leveraging charitable giving by reforming our tax laws uh, and specifically reforming the inequitable treatment uh, given to charitable contributions in our existing tax code. This is a reform that could bolster our COVID-19 response, as we discussed in our last hearing. Uh, we have to remember that our safety net consists of three levels. So you've got um, families, you've got charitable organizations, and you've got governments. Uh, charitable organizations are in the middle of those two. They're, they're very important. And in a global pandemic like this one, you see them stretched thin at both ends, just as the demand for their services 
is higher than ever during something like a global pandemic. You've also got people less inclined and less able to donate in such a time, especially from people in the, in the middle and the, the lower ends of the economic scale. Our efforts should also include sunsetting all federal regulations that were waived during the pandemic. In a letter to the recently confirmed director of the Office of Management and, and Budget, Russ Vogt, several of my Senate colleagues and I asked that these waived regulations go through the regulatory review process. That is, before they can be put in again, they, we ought to review them to figure out whether they still make sense. This process would determine whether we need to maintain these regulations, whether we need to modify them, or whether we need to rescind them. Now, we noted in our letter the absence of the waived regulations, uh, that the, the absence of these waived regulations being implemented uh, actually improved our COVID-19 response efforts and also allowed doctors to practice medicine across state lines and to provide telehealth services for Medicare patients. This resulted in better patient outcomes, it resulted in cost savings, and it resulted in uh, a, a suppression of activities that would otherwise have likely led to more COVID-19 exposure. So all those things are good. We have to consider them for the longer term. Now also seems like a particularly good time to pass the Working Families Flexibility Act, which would allow more employers to offer their own workers a choice between overtime pay on the one hand and time off, uh, paid time off on the other hand. This could help workers take time off if they become ill or if they need to care for loved ones, while also giving employers uh, yet another tool to help weather these uh, nasty disruptive effects uh, uh, associated with the pandemic on payrolls and on worker schedules. But look, whatever actions we might take, we need to not lose faith in our ability as a deliberative body, uh, both in the Senate and in the House of Representatives to represent our respective constituents and to consider and evaluate, debate, and improve various policy solutions tailored to the crisis uh, that our country faces at this moment and in future moments. And we have to remember that policy should support the resiliency of the American people in the face of adversity, rather than making them more dependent on government. So thanks again, Vice Chair Beyer, for calling this important hearing. And thanks to the witnesses for being here today. I look forward to your testimony and to a worthwhile discussion.